Nobody does fall better than Whole Foods Market. The Spice Up Autumn event is happening now. Save on Animal Welfare Certified Beef Top Sirloin Steak, perfect with gravy for a comforting meal. Find savings on organic honey crisp apples and organic pears. Then visit the bakery department for their limited time pumpkin butter chai cake. And while you can, level up your fridge with fall wine, beers, and ciders. Spice up autumn at Whole Foods Market. Terms apply. Must be 21 plus. Please drink responsibly. Have you ever noticed how a calm mind can really set the stage for a good night's sleep? That's the idea behind our new podcast, Good Sleep. Greg, our host from Optimal Relationships Daily, is here to help ease you into a peaceful night's rest with some positive affirmations. And these affirmations aren't just comforting, they can help ease anxiety and nurture positive thoughts, setting you up for true good sleep. So, press play on good sleep tonight because a good tomorrow starts with a good night's sleep. Just search for good sleep in your podcast app and be sure to pick the one from Optimal Living Daily. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2311. Four Fatal Muscle Building Pitfalls and What to Do Instead by Eric Bach of bachperformance.com and I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy Sunday and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. It's kind of like an audiobook, but with articles instead and articles from a bunch of different authors and of course, always permission from those authors. Now on Fridays, That's where I do something a little different. That's where I answer your questions. You can send in your question by going to oldpodcast.com slash ask or email it directly to health at oldpodcast.com. All right, and with that, let's hear today's article and continue optimizing your life. Four Fatal Muscle Building Pitfalls and What to Do Instead by Eric Bach of bachperformance.com. Do you eat a lot but find yourself unable to build muscle? You may be making one or more of the four fatal muscle-building mistakes that relate to diet. Here's how to stop once and for all and what to do instead. I should know. I spent the first years of my muscle-building journey just as confused. Finally, one of my early mentors sat me down and gave it to me straight, no chaser. Eric, you're training plenty. The problem is your diet. It doesn't matter if you eat a lot. If you're not building muscle, it's still not enough. It's as simple as that. Oof, that was hard to accept. But once I got over this barrier, everything changed. The truth is, everyone is different when it comes to building muscle. If you're not gaining, you need more calories, even if it's more than whatever equation you read about to calculate calories. Chances are, it just comes down to more calories and being consistent. Reflecting on this conversation got me thinking, what are the biggest muscle-building mistakes we help our clients navigate in the Minimalist Muscle Monthly and Bach Performance Physique coaching programs? Pitfall number one, not tracking calories. Without tracking calories, it's impossible to know where the gaps are in your nutrition. Most lifters think they're eating enough most of the time, but most of them are mostly wrong most of the time. They are under eating as much as 50% of the time, despite their efforts. This is enough to stop muscle building in its tracks. If you're really struggling, track everything for a month. If you just need to check that you're on the right track, Try tracking what you eat a few days per month on different days of the week in MyFitnessPal, for example, to see where your gaps are. Without the awareness of your blind spots, you're flying blind when it comes to building muscle. When you track, even if only periodically, you'll have tangible advice on where you need to improve going forward. Pitfall number two, following inherently restrictive diets. Every few years, there's a resurgence in calorie reduction diets. Paleo keto, fasting, you name it. All of these diets have their place. In fact, any diet can work well for fat loss when it eliminates time periods of eating or restricts food. Here's the problem. Again, the main reason you're struggling to build muscle is that you're not eating enough. Any diet that's predicated on making it harder to overeat is less than ideal for building muscle. I love how I feel with fasting. I do use it when cutting down or even for maintenance but fasting is simply an inferior option when it comes to building muscle. 
The same is true for keto, paleo, and whatever diet of the month is hot at the moment. Pitfall number three, drastic overeating. When I was in college, I was desperate to gain muscle for football. Heck, even after I hung up my cleats, I wanted to grow. I continued devouring ice cream and weight gainers to hit my calories. Much to my chagrin, I grew softer than Charmin. There is a point of diminishing returns to eating up a storm in hopes of building muscle. It takes patience and testing to find the right amount of calories to add when you're lifting. But the truth is, you only need to add 300 to 500 more calories than you burn each day to build muscle. Here's the sad truth. If you're housing an extra 1,500 calories, you may see more progress on the scale, but the vast majority of it is going to be blubber. Pitfall number four, mini cut and diet break errors. A common mistake bulkers make is adding mini cuts, one to two week periods of lower calorie eating during a bulk. They know, or they think they know, that short term mini cuts have been shown to help optimize insulin sensitivity and boost nutrient partitioning, which helps you stay leaner. So why is this a problem? First, I'll admit we do use mini cuts and calorie cycling in our coaching programs but we only do this because of the extreme accountability we offer to our clients in sticking to the process. But most people in most situations lack that support, guidance, and accountability. The vast majority of people who try mini cuts end up sabotaging their muscle building goals due to poor execution. The key mistake? Most lifters end up taking mini cuts too far and pivot completely away from trying to build muscle. Soon, they enter the vicious bulk cut cycle where they change diet plans every few weeks without giving their body enough time to truly change. They fail because they haven't laid the necessary foundation. They misapply the science. Most lifters end up ditching the bulk altogether. They don't adequately reflect on months past and realize they really haven't made the progress they wanted. Remember, building muscle is a long-term process. Research has consistently shown that adding one to three pounds of muscle per month is great for a beginner. Beginner meaning one year or less of proper training. Research has also shown that one pound of muscle per month is great for a semi-experienced lifter, somebody who's been lifting consistently for one to three years. And half a pound per month is great progress for someone who's more advanced, someone with three or more years of proper eating, training, and sleeping. In other words, building appreciable muscle takes a great plan in the kitchen, gym, and in the bed over the long haul if you're going to add steak to a wiry frame. If you're serious about building muscle, everything should be focused on building muscle for months and years at a time, not weeks and months. Like many things in life, you need tunnel vision and a roadmap to success. Most of all, you need consistency and accountability to stick to it when times get tough. You just listened to the post titled, Four Fatal Muscle-Building Pitfalls and What to Do Instead by Eric Bach of bachperformance.com. Nobody does fall better than Whole Foods Market. The Spice Up Autumn event is happening now. Save on Animal Welfare Certified Beef Top Sirloin Steak, perfect with gravy for a comforting meal. Find savings on organic honey crisp apples and organic pears. Then visit the bakery department for their limited time pumpkin butter chai cake. And while you can, level up your fridge with fall wine, beers, and ciders. Spice up autumn at Whole Foods Market. Terms apply, must be 21 plus. Please drink responsibly. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Wow, I could so relate to Eric's pitfall number three. Pitfall number three was all about drastic overeating. When I first got into weightlifting, I once told my workout buddy, I just want my body to look big and thick. He then replied, no dude, you do not want that. Your body will look soft. There won't be any definition. You want your muscles to pop. But alas, I ignored him. And here's just one example of what one of my dinners would look like when I was trying to look thick and big. I would eat a full protein bowl, you know, chicken, rice, vegetables, beans, which alone was about 1,100 calories and then finish it off with two slices of pizza. After overeating like this for months, I went from having a waist size of 32 inches to one that was 36 inches. So I got thick all right, but in all the wrong places. I ended up with a large waist, which means I was carrying more fat in the abdominal area. 
This is a problem because carrying more weight around this area increased my risk for developing cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. In fact, my blood cholesterol levels went from being normal to being way too high. Plus, as my friend predicted, all of my weightlifting efforts weren't showing. I was putting on too many fat pounds, which was hiding any muscular growth. Eventually, I did undo a lot of this excess, but it took a lot of effort and a lot of time. I am finally back down to a 32-inch waist, and I'm always aware of how easy it is for me to overeat. So through that process, I learned a lot about myself and how to avoid pitfall number three. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here every day. And I'll be back here tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits.